the journey that tomorrow will bring So be sure you're always ready to face anything Every move you make, every step you take Yeah, they will be on this map you've made If you're ready to see what could lie beyond the land and the sea Always shining bright, so difficult but charming Something go One dream One wish If you wanna chase your dream Go for the knockout Over the top Hello everybody, it is I, TDI Fan 2023 And welcome to my final video of the year It's crazy, it's already the end of the year I can't believe it Anyways, in this video, I will be ranking all of the 2023 movies that I have seen from worst to best. Now, I have seen about over 100 movies this year. Um, some of them were rewatches and some are just older movies that I've seen for the first time. But in this ranking, I'll only be ranking the films that I have seen that have been released this year. With that said, out of all the films I watched this year, about 42 of them will count in this ranking. Now let's rank them all. Remember, this is all just my personal opinion. And also let me know what your top and bottom movies are in the comment section down below. Now with that out of the way, let's get on with my ranking. A bear did cocaine. Yeah, this movie, well, it's a, it's a movie. I honestly do not know why I took this one out. It is just simply bad, but in a funny way, I guess. The CGI was pretty solid. But still, it's Cocaine Bear. What else is there to say? And what else would be in the bottom? This movie just sucks. Welcome back to Monster High. Next up, we have Monster High 2, the sequel to the live action adaptation of the Monster High franchise. The first one was pretty bad, but I do have to admit that this one was a bit of an upgrade, but not by much. It's still pretty awful. And from the looks of it, it looks like they will be making the third one as well. So I guess we're just going to wait and see how that one turns out. But yeah, Monster High 2, pretty bad of a film. She's entangled our light-based powers. So we switch places whenever we use them. I mean, this one was not a surprise. The Marvels is certainly one of the worst MCU films, as well as being one of the worst movies of this year. The CGI is noticeably bad, the acting isn't great, and the plot is pretty bad as well. Not much to say about this film. It's pretty garbage, to say the least. And that is why it's at number 40 on this list. Also, I cannot forget to mention that this is their lowest box office open, so that's very bad. I am king! You! You talk to ants! Next up is another MCU film. Yeah, this wasn't a great year for Marvel fans. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is pretty bad too. I do not like how they handled Cassie Lane. They made her pretty obnoxious in this film. And all of the characters were pretty dumb too. The new characters I could not care any less for. And what did they do to my boy Kane? Losing to ants? That's some bad riding right there. Marvel, they need to get their shit together. But yeah, Quantumania is pretty bad and that's why it's low on this list. I just threw a truck at a dragon. I love my life. Coming in at number 38, we have Shazam 2. I thought that this film would be pretty good, but it's not. It's very cringy, and they made Zachary Levi annoying. The villains sucked, the CGI was bad, and nobody asked for Gal Gadot to appear. This movie has a lot of problems, and I bet that Dwayne Johnson has something to do with it. Um, with that said, Shazam Fear of the Gods is pretty disappointing, and that's why it's low on the list. There's never been one like me, Gale. Taking the 37th spot on this list is Scream 6. Why did they make six movies of this pretty dead franchise? I don't know. I would have to admit that this one was a bit better than the one they had last year, but it's still pretty mid. I didn't care for any of the new characters, and I just didn't care for anything at all that this film had to offer. And it looks like Scream 7 is about to die because they just lost their big actors and director. And honestly, it's not like we're gonna want another one anyways, so just let this series die already. I think I am having a panic attack. 
Taking the 36th spot on this list is Ruby Gilman. This movie is just mid. I wasn't interested going in and I certainly came out disappointed. This is the movie they decide to follow up after the GOAT known as Puss in Boots The Last Wish DreamWorks. Anyways, this movie is just boring and generic. Nothing much to like, although the animation is pretty nice, but nothing special. At least it was original, I guess, but pretty bad for an original film. What's it exactly that you bring to this? I'm a planner. I make plans. Taking the 35th spot is Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. This movie is not my cup of tea. Although Chris Pine was fantastic in this film, he was not enough to save it. The CGI was pretty good, but that's it. I legit almost fell asleep watching this one. But at least it isn't bad, just not great in my opinion. And that's why it's at number 35 on this list. Got legs, you idiot! Next up, we have Disney's live action remake of one of their best films, The Little Mermaid. I will admit that this remake isn't half bad. Certainly not as bad as other remakes like The Lion King and Pinocchio, however, it pales in comparison to the original. But I did like Halle Bailey as Ariel, at least when she was sinning, and the CGI isn't half bad either, but it's still a Disney remake so you know it's not going to be great. But I'd say this one is passable. Dominic Toretto, you're about to learn all about fear. Taking the 33rd spot is Fast X. Yes, it's a Fast and Furious movie, so you know it won't be great. However, I did have a fun watch with this one, pretty much due to how dumb it was. But still, Fast and Furious should have ended a long time ago, and apparently there will be two more of these films, so that's a no-no. But still, I had a fun time with this one, and that's why it's at number 33 on this list. I'm nobody. I ain't even seen nothing. I'm not even seeing anything right now. Taking the 32nd spot on this list is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Now, just like Fast X, I had a fun time with this one, but I'm not a big fan of Transformers, and I thought this was just fine. Um, but I bet that Transformers fans love this one. The CGI is good enough, and the story is pretty bland, but still, it was a fun watch, and that's why it's at 32 on this list. Sharp thing. No. There he is. Doctor. Somebody get security. Yep, I did see this film all right. It's not bad, but just like Dungeons and Dragons, it's just not my cup of tea. Ken stole the show though, or Ryan Gosling should say. I'm just Ken will stand the test of time. And the props and cinematography is pretty good. But like I said, this movie is just not my type of movie. It was a fun watch, I guess, but I do not see myself revisiting this one anytime soon. Seconds. Next up, we have The Equalizer 3. I do not know why I saw this one, uh, it was just that my other older brother wanted to see it and he brought the entire family to watch. So what do I think of it? Well, it is something I guess. I haven't seen the first two so I don't really like this one and I guess that's why. But uh, the action is pretty good, other than that this film is just a film that exists in my eyes and that's why it's at number 30 on this list. They're not people Maya. It's just programming. Taking the 29th spot is The Creator. I was pretty interested in this one, but after watching it, it's not great, but it's not bad either. As you can see, it's practically in the middle of this list. So it's got a lot of cool effects and the story is pretty good, but the movie itself is just average to be honest. And I don't think I'm gonna remember this one much in the future. And that's why it's at number 29 on this list. Is everyone else hearing, chump? Taking the 28th spot is a pretty bland movie, Migration. Yeah, it's something, I guess. The cast did well, and I did like the vibrant colors. It's definitely one of Illumination's better films, but it's still mid. Goes to show how much the studio can do, huh? However, I did like the moon short that played before the film quite a bit. And that's pretty much it. That's why this film is at number 20 in this list. Taking the 27th spot on this list is Trolls Band Together. This movie is still pretty mid, like the other two films, but it's actually a bit of an improvement compared to the other two, although it's still pretty mid, like I said. The music and animation is nice, however, Better Place is one of my top movie songs of the year, too, and I guess that's something. 
but nothing much to say. Pretty mid, but I guess it was also a fun watch. You can also destroy everything. Taking the 26th spot is none other than The Flash, one of the most controversial films of the year for sure. Yes, it has wonky CGI. Yes, it has Ezra Miller. But even after all of that, I thought the film was quite enjoyable. Story-wise, anyway. Um, and seeing Michael Keaton as Batman was pretty nice, too. But it is still has a lot of issues, and it's not that great. And that's why it's on this spot the list. Not exactly naughty. But definitely gross. Taking the 25th spot is the third animated Diary of Wimpy Kid film. I was not excited for this one due to the previous two not being good adaptations, but this one is easily the best of the three. It's not as bad as them, but I would say that this one is overall decent. The cast is at least somewhat likable, other than Manny of course, and since this book hasn't been adapted before, it was like a new breath of fresh air. I decide what everyone deserves. Taking the 24th spot is Disney's Wish, Walt Disney's animation's next animated feature, and this film has been gained a lot of hate left and right. And while I do think that it is severely overhated, it's also quite disappointing for a film that's supposed to celebrate Disney's 100th anniversary. Asha is your typical bland Disney protagonist, and Valentino is one of the worst Disney side characters. However, I did find Keen Magnifico and some of the music to be fun and good, but yes, for what's supposed to be Disney's 100th anniversary film, it's not great, but certainly not bad either. Just watch me! I'll be the Wizard King! Next up, we have Black Clover's Sword of the Wizard King. I was craving for some more Black Clover content, and it felt like it's been forever since the last episode aired. So when this movie came out, I was pretty hyped. And after watching it, yeah, it's pretty good. The animation is great, the story is alright, and the new characters introduced are just okay, but I was just here for some Black Clover goodness and this film delivered. While it ain't the best anime film that I've seen this year, it's still a great watch for Black Clover fans. I like Batman stuff. Batman's a fascist. Next up on this list is Blue Beetle. The trailers did not do this film for me, so I wasn't going in with any excitement, but after seeing it, I do think that it's pretty good. Not the best DC film, but it's far from being the worst. The family dynamic is great, and the villain does suck. It's nothing special, but it is a fun watch, and that's why it's at number 22 on this list. This could change the course of your entire life. I'm not afraid of a couple ghosts. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked with where I ranked this film. I was not excited for Haunted Mansion, and I didn't even give it a chance on the big screen. So I did save it for when it dropped on Disney+, Plus, and after watching this film, it's pretty good. The cast did well with their roles, the movie was funny enough, and the CGI wasn't all that bad. I haven't seen the original one with Eddie Murphy, so I don't know if this one is better or as good, but I can safely say that this one's a decent follow-up, and that's why it's at number 21 on this list. Starting my top 20 is the fifth installment to the Indiana Jones franchise. I don't know why they decided to make another one, but it is Disney, so it's not hard to see why. Uh, before I watched this one, I went on an indie marathon to get myself ready for this film. And after watching those films, I would have to say that they were pretty good. But this one is not bad, to say the least. Although it does not live up to the first three films, it was nice to see Indiana Jones and the others back after so long. But this franchise really needs to rest. I mean, this film did bomb at the box office, so I'm not the only one that thinks of this. But I will have to admit that I had a fun watch with this film. Not great, but pretty solid. Wish to be locked up. I wasted my life! Yeah, I'm kind of shocked with how high I put this film. While Leo isn't necessarily a good film, it surprised me with how much it has to offer. Yes, the animation is pretty bad, and yes, it is an Adam Sandler movie, so there isn't much to expect. But I would have to say that this one is one of his best films. Not up there with the Grown Ups films or Paul Blart, but it is pretty close. The story is pretty heartwarming, and I think Adam Sandler did pretty good with his role as Leo. Definitely one of the surprise hits of the year, and that's why it's at number 19 of this list. Last time we broke out of a chicken farm. This time, we're breaking in.
Taking the 18th spot is Chicken Run 2, Dawn of the Nugget, a sequel that's very unnecessary, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. Of course, it does not compare to the original Chicken Run film, and one has to wonder why it took them 23 years to make this sequel. But enough about that. The animation is pretty good. Actually, not just pretty good, really good. The cast did pretty good with their roles, and although the story is pretty lacking, it doesn't stop the film from being a decent sequel to a great film like Chicken Run. And that's why this sequel is at number 18 on this list. I played for five minutes. I still see falling blocks in my dreams. Taking the 17th spot on this list is Tetris. This film dropped on Apple TV earlier this year, and I did not expect to like this film as much as I did. It's a somewhat true story about how the game Tetris got ported, or imported, I should say, to the United States, and this story is pretty insane. Like, you have to watch the movie to believe me. Taron Ed Egerton, or Edgerton, did fantastic in this movie, and it's just a really fun film. Definitely watch it if you get the chance, because it's a great film about how Tetris became a really popular game. Taking the 16th spot on this list is Suzume, Makoto Shinkai's newest film, and probably his best. I'm still debating on what my favorite Shinkai film is, but this one is definitely a top contender. The story may be difficult to wrap your head around, but the characters and animation is what truly carries this film, as well as the soundtrack, of course. Something that Disney is lacking. But yeah, Suzume is a very beautiful film and should definitely be seen by fans of your name and Weather with you. No, not cool. Eh, a bit cool. Can I? Taking the 15th spot on this list is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. This film is very fun and breathtaking. This new rendition of the turtles is very fun to see, and the animation is just outstanding. Yes, the story is pretty generic, and the characters and sceneries is what pretty much makes up the entire film. This movie is fun and over the top, and of course, if you're a casual TMNT fan like myself, I definitely recommend this one to watch because it's fun, and I'm definitely excited for the sequel. Yo, what up, everybody? Roy and Kitty here. I'm gonna pick a stock and talk about why I think it's interesting, and that stock is GameStop. Taking the 14th spot is a movie, a small movie, called Dumb Money, another film that I surprisingly liked a lot more than I expected I would. This movie is about the whole GameStop stocks fiasco that happened about two years ago, and I didn't know anything about that, but after watching this movie and learning about it, it got me quite intrigued. This film is very good and hilarious. This cast is hilarious, and it's very fascinating to see Wall Street lose their heads with this stock. It is one of those films that's based on a true story that's actually good. Who do you think the best driver is? Probably Rory. I would dust him in a lap! Taking the 13th spot is Gran Turismo. This film is another one that I was not interested at first, but after watching it, I'm glad that I did. Video game fans have been eating good this year, and this film is no different. The story is about a gamer who turned into an actual race car driver. It sounds insane, right? But this movie has a lot of action and momentum building up between each race, and it just keeps you on the edge of your seat. This is one of the very underrated films of the year, and... I just want you guys to check it out. It's really good. So make sure you check it out if you get the chance. It's a good one. Boss, my dad would boil you alive. Why does anyone get to tell you what you can do in your life? Taking the 12th spot is the only Pixar film that released this year, Elemental. The trailers did not do this film justice, making it seem like your typical rom-com, but it's much more than that. This film deals with tough topics like immigration and polar opposites. And of course, with Pixar, the animation is just out of this world. Not one of Pixar's best films, but it's definitely not down there with their worst or mid films. Elemental was certainly a surprise hit this year, critically and financially too, even with its atrocious box office opening. If you haven't seen this film yet, you definitely should. If you have Disney+, Plus, make sure you give this one a watch. None of our lives can matter more than this mission. Taking the 11th spot is Mission Impossible 7. 
I'm not a Mission Impossible guy. I haven't seen any of the other films prior to this one, but with this one being directed by the same person who made the GOAT of movies known as Top Gun Maverick, I decided to give this one a watch. And just like everyone who's seen it, it's that good. The cinematography and action is top tier, and this is just another film that keeps you on the edge of your seat. It's a spy flick that is extraordinary and should definitely be seen by Tom Cruise fans and those who just want a good movie to watch. And that's why it's at number 11 on this list. I need a sidekick. Every villain needs a sidekick. I'm not a villain! Top 10, baby. And starting off my top 10 is Nimona. This is another movie that shocked me with how good it really is. The animation is very creative, and it looks like it's taken inspiration from other films like Spider-Verse. The story is something that I've never seen before, so that's extra points for creativity. And to think that Disney tried to shelve this film along with Blue Sky Studios. Netflix for the win once again. The cast did excellent with their roles, and the emotional scenes really hit. And honestly, what's left to say, this film is really good, great even, and that's why it seals a spot on my top 10. Hi, this is Mike. I was just calling to see if that job that you offered was still available. Finets at Freddy's. That's where I wanna be. That's right, taking the ninth spot is the movie adaptation of Five Nights at Freddy's. You are probably wondering, why is this film so high? Well, it's due to me liking it a lot. I'm a casual when it comes to the FNAF series, um, but I was pretty stoked for this film. Yes, it seems like your typical generic slasher film, but with animatronics that come to life. And while yes, that is pretty much what this film is, it still manages to be one of my favorite films of the year. Josh Hutcherson plays Mike Schmidt very nicely, and Matthew Lillard, Lillard as William Afton is just a guilty pleasure. Also, extra points for adding the FNAF song from The Living Tombstone. And apparently the sequel is already planned for a 2024 release, so you know I'm gonna check that one out. This film is pretty much a love letter to the FNAF fandom, and as I said before, video game fans are eating good this year. And that's why the Five Nights at Freddy's movie is taking the ninth spot on this list. I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I simply never do. Taking the 8th spot is Napoleon, Ridley Scott's biopic on events that took place during the French Revolution era. I mainly wanted to see this film just because of Joaquin Phoenix, I mean, he is quite an actor. And after watching this film over the Thanksgiving weekend, I have to say it is one of my favorite films of the year. The action and cinematography is fantastic, Joaquin and Vanessa Kirby did very good with their roles, and honestly Napoleon's story is just very interesting. Not much left to say, this is a great biopic, and that's why it's at number 8 on this list. So quiet up and listen down. Nope, scratch that, reverse it. Taking the 7th spot is Wonka, another surprise hit of the year. I didn't know what to think about Timothy Chalamet playing Willy Wonka in this adaptation, but after watching it, he did amazing. The score is great, with a lot of awesome songs added to the mix. Hugh Grant as the Oompa Loompa was gr a great choice, honestly. And this movie had a chocolate cartel. What's left to say? It's a very good holiday type movie. If you are a fan of the previous two Willy Wonka mo movies, then you certainly will enjoy this one. It's a great film for the whole family. And that's why it's at number seven on this list. You know, you got, you got nice color scheme. Next up is the one and only Killers of the Flower Moon. I've only seen about two of Martin Scorsese's other films prior to this one, but I believe that this is my favorite out of those films that I've seen. The cinematography is excellent, the action is top notch, as well as the acting. Leonardo DiCaprio did fantastic in this film, along with Robert De Niro. This film is about the tragic events that occurred many years ago that involved Americans and the Osage Nation, as well as dealing with murders that occurred. This film depicts those events very well, and you really get to see how devastating this was, and feeling the Osage Nation, like you, you would feel for them. This film is brilliant, although the only downside I would have to say, which is arguably its super long runtime, other than that, it's just a perfect film made by Scorsese himself. You are the man who gave them the power to destroy themselves. 
Taking the fifth spot on this list is, of course, Oppenheimer. I've seen a few films made by Mr. Christopher Nolan himself, and this film is right up his alley. A biopic about J. Robert Oppenheimer and the process of the making of the atomic bomb. Yes, the events are very tragic, knowing what the creation of the atomic bomb led to. But this film is honestly perfect. My eyes were glued to the screen for the entire time, the entire three hour runtime. The cast did great with their roles and the cast was also stacked. The highlights being, of course, Cillian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. The cinematography is some of the best that I've seen in film. But what do you expect coming from the man behind the Dark Knight trilogy? Oppenheimer is one of those films that just really sinks in and stays with you, which is why it's a no brainer that it's in my top five. We'll all fly away together into the forever and beautiful sky. Coming in at number four, we have the epic conclusion to the amazing Guardians trilogy Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. One of my most anticipated films of the year, and it's of course lands a spot on my top 5. James Gunn does it again, and he also surprised me, making me cry twice in the theater. This film is just one of the crazy emotional roller coaster. We see the Guardians team face the music one last time to take down the High Evolutionary and save their true captain, Rocket Raccoon, who also steals Spooty Man's role as my favorite Marvel character. This movie is just pure magic, one of MCU's best for sure, as well as a satisfying conclusion to this great trilogy, and I now have high hopes for the future of DC films, because it is in good hands. And that is why Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 takes the four spot on this list. Right. That's a go. Coming in at third place, we have the Super Mario Bros. movie. This was my number one for a while, but after watching two other films, this went down to three. But that's not something to be sad about. Illumination and Nintendo achieved what seemed to be impossible with this movie, proving us wrong that there can be a good Mario film. Sure, this movie has a stacked cast, and some did not fit their roles, like Chris Pratt as Mario, um, of course being the standout. But I will have to admit that Pratt didn't do that bad of a job. He even almost sounded just like Mario that we know and love at times. Yes, this movie is fast paced and all over the place, but that doesn't bother me, which is strange because that would usually bother me with other films. Maybe I'm just biased, but I don't care, this is my list. Anyways, this movie is spectacular. The animation is very good for Illumination standards, and it's just such a fun movie. And of course, this is my number one Illumination film. I mean, there's no contest. And that's why it's at number three on my list. I am deeply looking forward to what Nintendo has in store for us in the future with their games turning into films. Dear your mother, she's awaiting your rescue. I'll be your guide. Taking the runner-up spot is one of the recent films that was released this year in North America, as well as Hayao Miyazaki's most recent film, The Boy and the Heron. I mean, with Miyazaki on board, you know you're in for a treat. This film is simply amazing. The animation is gorgeous, the cast of characters are fun and endearing, Miyazaki does it again. I won't be going into too much detail because I've already talked about this film in my Studio Ghibli ranking video, so if you want to hear more about my thoughts of this film, then make sure you go watch that video. But yeah, The Boy and the Heron is just simply another spectacle, and should definitely be seen if you are a fan of Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli as a whole. Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah. I'm gonna do my own thing. Taking the top spot is none other than Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. The first Spider-Verse film is a masterpiece, so it makes sense that this one is too. Especially when you have, you know, Avatar The Last Airbender Riders on board. This film is just such a perfect follow-up to the first. Even better, in my honest opinion. Seeing the Spider Society and other universes, also, they did not have to go that far to make the spot such a menacing villain, but I'm glad that they did. This film makes recent Disney films look bad. 
Across the Spider-Verse is one of the best sequels out there, and it's also one of the best animated movies out there, and it's just simply one of the best movies out there, period. It's a no-brainer why it's number one. The characters are great, the animation is phenomenal, and the story is amazing. With that said, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is without a doubt my favorite movie of 2023, and one of my all-time favorite movies in general. So, it's no wonder that it takes my number one spot on this list. And that's my 2023 ranking. Of course, I have seen more than 42 movies, so if you want to see my complete list, it'll be in the pinned comment down in the comment section. Also, before we end this video off, I would like to list a few movies that I am actually pretty hyped for that are coming out next year. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Kung Fu Panda 4, Joker 2, Deadpool 3, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, My Hero Academia The Movie 4, If, Despicable Me 4, Inside Out 2, Dune Part 2, and so much more. With that said, this year has been pretty hectic for movies. Some wins and some losses. But we can all agree that this year had some pretty damn good movies. And I cannot wait to see what next year has in store. Let me know what your top and bottom movies are this year. And as always, thanks a bunch for tuning into this video. This is TDI Fan 2023 signing off for the final time. Peace, have a happy new year, and thanks for watching.